months ago, leader of the Movement for Change, Alan Kujo Tremontin, told me on the program that he was looking to form alliances with like-minded groups and individuals. Today, he has found his first primary partner on the journey to break the NDC and NPP politics and rescue this country. The merger bears what is now called the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. On Hot Issues today, we ask, what does this alliance bring to the table? And is it enough to bring about that revolutionary change? I am Kemini Amano and tonight my guest was on the presidential ballot in 2012. Although he lost, he will go on to form the National Interest Movement. Today, he is first to say I do to the butterfly movement. What were the considerations? And does he still have presidential ambitions? We'll find out as I sit with Dr. Michael Abusakara Foster on Hot Issues. You're welcome to Hot Issues. It's a pleasure to be here. Indeed. Yes. Recently, uh, the National Interest Movement formed an alliance with Movement for Change. What went into that decision to be a part of Movement for Change? I think the first point is that we both are movements, uh, and uh, we also have the same outlook and the same objectives. Mm -hmm. We want to see a transformative change, not just a change not a change of party, not a change of leadership, but a change in terms of getting the quantum leap in development that has eluded us all this while. Uh, so though that objective brought us together, mm. uh, in addition to that, uh, you can say that um, we have all been thinking about how we can form a vehicle that will be an alternative to the NDC and MPP and offer us something beyond what they have offered us. So that again became a driving force. Uh, we know individually we may not have the wherewithal because the elections have now been heavily monetized. So it is going to take a collective effort of the people who are not on either side but are now in the non-aligned domain to come together. Uh, rather than contest individually within that domain. Mm. So it's a natural and organic process uh, that happened, uh, and it has had its time. As most of you know, I've been talking about this, an alternative for the last six, seven years uh, since I left the Convention People's Party and started this movement for this particular objective. Mm. What can we do to remove the impediments right. that have held us back as a nation? from becoming what we can be. So this is the moment. Well, so, so I mean, despite what you have said, yeah. um, the other contendants mm. or people who have made themselves known to uh, run for presidency, mm. uh, they have also made the same point that they want to, uh, you know, break the duopoly of mm. the NPP and mm. the NDC. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd like to believe that Movement for Change is not the first one to approach you. For well, an alliance. Um, of course, we have also been working in what we call the Ghana First Coalition, uh, where when we started the National Interest Movement, it was an association of like-minded people mm -hmm. who all wanted the same thing. So we said, let's get together. Let's bring all the issues that each one of us feels passionate about, put it on the table, and formulate it. So the idea that you must have a change in the system, mm -hmm. a reform of the system, in order to be able to carry the interventions and in development more effectively to deliver that quantum leap mm -hmm. is the base, the foundation. We're saying that no, yes, the development issues are the same. Mm -hmm. You always right, I, I understand that. So what, yes. what I was driving at is uh, that the, the idea of breaking the duopoly yes. is not a you know, unique yeah. idea for the uh, movement for change, yes. for which you find commonality with. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I think that, you know, movement for change is not the first uh, oh, no. to approach you for an no. alliance, for no. a merger. Yeah. No. But you chose movement for change. Yes. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we were already working in a bigger coalition. Mm. Uh, we had set, set some targets for ourselves. Okay. I'll speak to that later on. Uh, I did not... Movement for Change came about 
in an indirect way. Okay. Uh, whilst he was still contesting for his candidature in the NPP, he approached me to help him with his great transformation plan. I see. And that immediately triggered something. I said, ah, but this man has not won yet, and he's thinking about a transformation plan. That means he's not going to just come and make promises. So let's see what is inside this plan. And lo and behold, I saw a very well-structured intervention uh, that is holistic in thinking about the country, sound in its policies. So I contributed to that in terms of developing parts of it for, for them, uh, because that's what I do in my life. I do, I've done that all my life. If I can do it for other countries, why can't I do it for my own country? Uh, then from there, the relationship developed because they invited me to the National Economic Summit. Okay. Uh, I went there and uh, I was even privileged to give some remarks there. And a lot of other CSOs, as you mentioned, who also were interested in the same things, came to listen. It was a look-see. Mm -hmm. What is in this shop? Is there anything unusual about it? Then I think most of them saw that this is a comprehensive plan. The problem with many of the individual things are that first of all, there's not the human resources, nor even the experience mm. to come out with a comprehensive strategy and, and plan and then put it together. So I think most people thought, well, if there's a, a, a rideable vehicle here mm. and it's going to Kumasi, why are we waiting for another bus? Let's all get in this one and go. I see, I <laughs> you see. and me. I see. Uh, but then of course, you want to make sure that the things that you are passionate about are also on board. If you're going to Nkoko, you want to make sure he will stop at Nkoko. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you and me? Yeah. So you and have you... to put in those uh, collective interests. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in development, some people are very passionate about the environment. Right. Some people are passionate about uh, GMO. Mm -hmm. Some people are passionate about women and etc. You have to find a way of creating you know, a framework that hangs all those things where they are supposed to be right. and have in place a main mm. system that is going to convey those things along. We all go to the I airport. And, we, and that, that made it easy to see commonality with movement. Of course, yeah, right. yes, yes. So, so, so then, if I understand, then it would mean that you broke away from the coalition to be oh, able to Oh, no, no, no. No, I brought, I, 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 we're still a national interest movement. National interest movement. No, I understand. But national interest movement, as you told us, yes. was a part of a coalition that was already... We helped form it. You helped and form the coalition. And it was formed for the purpose of facilitating... Uh, an electoral alliance, and that's exactly what we're doing now. So, is the entire coalition, yeah. um, plus national interest movement, yeah. now in alliance with well, the movement for change? Uh, I'm sure in the coming days, uh, when it is launched, you will see who is there and who is not there. Uh, I don't want to preempt uh -huh. anything by speaking for them. They have their chairman, uh -huh. etc. He will speak for them. So, you uh, haven't abandoned. Of course coalition. not. In fact, I, I'm a founding member of that coalition. Of the coalition. Yes, yes. I mean, despite what you have said, yeah. when the announcement came out yeah. that you had formed that measure yes. with Movement for Change, yes. you described it as premature. Yes, a premature in the sense that uh, we only said we are forming this alliance, this is what it's about, and this is what is going to happen on April 17th we will come out with everything. Mm -hmm. Immediately, it was not about the alliance. Uh, Chairman Ting and Alan, uh, vice president and presidential, I say, oh, where is that coming from? Have mm -hmm. we told you who's gonna be presidential? Have we told you who's gonna be vice? So that is premature. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? You, yeah. In addition to that, you <laughs> yeah. said the premature announcement was going to give room for sabotage. Well, no, we said, I, what I said was that uh, we came out with it earlier because we were aware that people were leaking it. Mm. And if somebody is going to leak your information, it's better you take charge of it, because then your narrative holds. But if I come and leak information about your program, and then I'm saying what I think about your program, then my narrative becomes what you, what you were going to say, not what you wanted to say. So that was basically what I was speaking to, that if the information has already got out, it is better we issue some kind of minimum statement mm. to state who we are, 
what we are about and what we intend to do. Don't allow other people to describe you and say what you are going to do. And even with that official announcement, already people had jumped the gun to conclude who's going to be... <laughs> Wait, so, so, so was your statement directed at those who were interpreting the announcement or it was directed at Movement for Change? No, I, I, the, the, the statement I made uh -huh. uh, in, in that respect was anticipatory. Okay. In other words, uh, people have started calling people. So how did this news get out? <laughs> yeah, because, be, because, because Movement for Change had released a statement no, no, to no. say that. That was prior to the release. <laughs> Are you with me? So we, we heard about that prior. So then we said, no, quickly, you must release a statement. You understand? So that statement was then released. No, I understand. So the, there was the leak. Yes. That it, there is a possibility of a merger between Alan Tremontine and uh, Dr. Abu Sakara. Yes, yes. You heard that. Yes. But you had not released your statement about no. the prematurity. No. Your statement about prematurity only came yes. after a uh, movement for change had officially announced no no the, the state my, my my yes it came after, after that. the movement for yes, change yes. had officially announced yes, you that's right or, or announced the merger between yes. national interest yes. movement yes. and movement for change yes right so what i'm asking is yeah. was your statement directed at the movement of change statement or it was directed at the public interpretation of that statement oh both, both. because in the first instance uh, that statement may have come out later when all the parties, mm. are you with me, had signed on. Uh, if you are preparing such uh, arrangements, you want to make sure everybody is on board mm -hmm. because somebody may hear it, they were coming. Say, ah, but if they've already announced and I'm not part of it, I should go back home. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So we were trying to preempt that mm -hmm. to let people know that, look, it has got out. This is what it is. But we are not concluded anything yet. Mm, are you with me? I see. Uh, it is still ongoing. If you are coming, come. Ah, I see. <laughs> That's interesting. So it brings me to my question. Yes. Is it mature now? Oh, I think we have, as you saw the other day and in the newspapers, uh, we have concluded the first phase, mm. which is the basic foundation okay. of the alliance. Mm. What are we here about? Mm -hmm. We're not here about Abu Sakara or Alan Shirmanting. Mm -hmm. We're here because we want to achieve something. And we know how we're going to do it, uh, what we need to do it, and we describe that to the, pop to the population. Mm -hmm. So having laid that out and how the alliance is going to work, you now open it up. Those people who want that can come in. Mm -hmm. If they don't want that, there's no problem. They can go and form whatever they want to form. But as you know, and you, know, you yourself know this, if you gather everybody around in your family mm -hmm. and tell them, no, we are going to build ourselves a new house. Let's talk about the design. Uh, you'll be there forever and ever because whatever you want, you know, people will be coming up with all kinds of ideas. Mm -hmm. You never, the time is now very short. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have much to go to the end of the election. So we are both quite experienced in this field. Indeed. And uh, the things that have brought us together have not been things that cropped up overnight. They're a reaction mm -hmm. to the reality of what we are facing. And anybody who cannot find common ground in that, then it's not in tune with the reality of what is going on on in the country mm. yes right so uh, just you know a few questions mm. on uh the state of the alliance before we go into the things that the alliance wants to mm. do um i'd ask what gave for the measure to be concluded mm. what was the promise made to national interest movement to make the alliance okay. possible it is not a promise to national interest movement okay it is an acceptance on both our parts that you have an interest in A, I have an interest in B. A and B are not mutually exclusive. They can be mutually reinforcing and synergistic, depending on how we put them together and the roles we play in that. Mm. So let's look at how we can do it. And that is the, the, the memorandum of agreement. Okay. And that is why it took longer to achieve, 
from the first day, we could have just said, yeah, this will be good for all of us. Let's announce it. Mm -hmm. But then after announcing it, you start going into the details mm -hmm. and then you have problems. And as you can see with most of these movements, even in mm -hmm. the Arab Spring and in Europe, you know, everybody is frustrated. They want the, the main common thing is that we want the guys out. Right. So we all can't giddy giddy, we get them out. Mm -hmm. But then what are we here for? What do we plan to do? Right. Who's gonna do what? Then the problem starts. And what you saw as a very huge crowd <laughs> splits up mm -hmm. and then they fall apart. We don't want that. Uh, and we're too far gone in our life to do such a thing. That is why we laid a foundation mm -hmm. first and opened it up to people mm -hmm. to come in. I see. You talked about rules. So what are the rules, uh, you know, based on the agreement that you have for the, for the alliance? Yeah. I think, first of all, we are going to have a, a structure for the alliance, mm. uh, and then it will be populated by the members of the alliance. Yes. In, the, in the scheme of things, if you have come mm -hmm. from national interest, and we know that you are good at media, etc. Then we say, okay, in the alliance, you take over that role. Mm -hmm. If somebody is good at economic policy and planning, he's from another organization, okay, you take over that role. Yeah. So that people do what they're best adapted to do mm -hmm. for the union to be as strong as it, 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 it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a question of us joining Movement for Change and following movement for change around all the time. No, that's I, not... I mean, I was going to get into that. No, I mean, because... what is your understanding of who is going to lead the alliance? Because no. Alan has already put himself out there as a presidential yeah, candidate. Yeah. We, we, hopeful. we don't have any problem with that whatsoever. Okay. Because at the very beginning, we made it very clear, even in uh, NIM, mm -hmm. and even in my position mm -hmm. in the GFC, has always been that we have to be more strategic in how we are aiming to get a mandate. Every election, presidential candidates sprout. Then you go and contest the election, knowing full well that only one person is going to win and that you don't have the resources to contest these other people. Mm. You don't win. The election is finished. Then four years of silence. Another four years, people come out. Why don't you tackle two or three constituencies, which if you concentrate your monies, you can compete with them. Mm -hmm. After all, we all know how much it costs to contest a constituency. Mm -hmm. If we all come together, we can afford two or three and match them boot for boot, mm -hmm. especially if we get credible, self-made people who know the area and come from that area and have served in the area. So then it is not a matter of so much of money deciding, but the caliber of the person deciding. And after the election, if you're lucky and you have three, four, five candidates, mm. they keep your message in the public domain, you have a voice in parliament, and you can keep building till the next election. Mm. This is how parties like the Green Party started. They had zero, you know, members of parliament. They were on the sea, just disrupting boats and causing, you know, havoc. But now, where are they in Germany? They have the majority Indeed. in the party because, Indeed. and they never put up a presidential candidate. Mm -hmm. They just went step by step. Mm -hmm. But if we are in a situation now where we have engagement with someone who has a strong, you know, uh, organization to contest for the presidency, and then we join together, then it is mutually reinforcing. Those people who are working at parliamentary level mm. can also support him and he can also support them. Mm. So it's a good marriage. I mean, but where would you be working? What will be yours? Oh, uh, I have already played my role. Okay. <laughs> I have made sure that we have come together, together mm. with Alan. Uh, I have made sure that the issues that are important to us to form a firm foundation for an alternative have been put in place and they are going to constitute mm. the body of the campaign, the language of the campaign, the objectives of the campaign mm. that we are going to put uh, in, in place now, uh, in the sense that they must give hope. Doc, Doc you, you sound as though you'll be taking a, a backstage role, but, but also if 
uh, movement for change maintains its candidates as yeah. Alan Chairman. He yeah. would need a running mate. Is that something you're interested no, in? I, I don't, I'm not discounting mm. that. What I'm saying basically is that at this material point in time, mm. we are at the point of a launch. When you are launching, people need to know what is this about? Mm -hmm. What is it going to deliver? How is it different from the other things? Then, of course, people also want of to Of course, know. I'm, I'm, people will also then ask. So when you've got that message out, the next thing is who are the faces behind it? Now, it is normal and natural that people looking at the current group of people there will say, oh, it, uh, obviously it's Alan and Abu, because we're the people they know. <laughs> are you with me? But we're going to do this in a consensual manner mm -hmm. to make sure that uh, we keep everybody on board and we're all working towards the same will, common will you, goal. Will you put your out, yourself out there for that well, consensus? Uh, put, consensus? Put it this way. Uh, I will decide whether I want to accept that role or not if they offer it to me. Are you with me? Mm. And I'll decide that on, in the context of how I can best help bring this thing that we have been working for all these years into fruition, are you with me? And it is a matter of looking at the dynamics at that time mm. and making that decision. It is possible, but it, is, it may also be that, you know, there's another role I could play. <laughs> Doc, we're going to come back on mm. that. Mm. We'll dig a bit more into whether or not you have given up on those amb uh, political ambitions you've had because you're not giving us a straightforward answer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I, I'm telling you that no, but, it's but possible. Hold, hold, hold it your is horses. possible. <laughs> no, no. Hold, hold, hold your fire on that one. When we come back, we'll discuss a bit more about the objectives of the ARC, mm. uh, the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. And why revolutionary, really? Don't go away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest today is founder of the National Interest Movement, Dr. Michael Abusakara Foster. Uh, thank you so much for your patience with us. It's been a pleasure, Kimini. So we've, we've talked about, you know, the uh, merger, the alliance, and mm -hmm. issues that have come out of mm -hmm. that. Um, Let's look now at what the, uh, you know, the, the alliance hopes to achieve. Mm -hmm. You have set out to, I mean, based on the statement that we've seen mm -hmm. from uh, movement, movement for Change, mm -hmm. your objective is to cure the poverty we see in the country mm -hmm. and to make sure that uh, winner takes all syndrome becomes a thing of the past. Mm -hmm. um, tell us a bit more about why these two are critical to the development of this country? I think, first of all, you have to look at what are the challenges we're facing. Uh, we have, in many spheres, a widening gap in this country, both in terms of wealth distribution, uh, in terms of the social strata, mm -hmm. in terms of the uh, political exclusion and uh, of some people out of the system. Mm -hmm. Uh, in addition to that, you have an increasing tension uh, out of this issue of so much unemployment, uh, a very high cost of living relative to incomes. So there are a number of indicators, despite, of course, in economics, you always choose the things you talk about which mm -hmm. you show that you're making progress. Mm -hmm. But if you look at things that describe the status and condition of people, those indicators are not looking good at all. In fact, they're looking very bad. So we have to address those issues in what we are going to do. And we have to address it in a real way, not just a question of making promises. Mm -hmm. And it has to be packaged in a way that it can sell. Mm -hmm. First, we must sell the concept of a government of national unity. We are not saying that uh, when this alliance wins, uh, the people who have been non-aligned who are with us, it is also their turn mm -hmm. to be taken care of. And the people in NDC and MPP should go and sit at home. Mm -hmm. uh, that is half the population. 
what we're saying is that running uh, governance this way, where people feel that the government in power is only taking care of their people, creates, continues to deepen the divide in society, and we have to stop it. Mm -hmm. So we want an independent presidential candidate, vote for that person. We are going to use the best people who are with us and also get people who are good from NDC, MPP, mm -hmm. are you with me, mm -hmm. to form a, a government of national unity. Now, you cannot say that, oh, don't touch those people from NDC, MPP, uh, they're, they're, they're bad, <laughs> are you with me? It's not all of them who are bad. Some of them even have never even had an opportunity within their own party to do anything, are you with me? Right. So you have to be realistic about that. In addition to that, uh, the talents of the country can never be in only one group of people. It is spread. So if we are serious about a government of national unity, we have to be able to stretch out and bring the best people to the fore. And as an independent candidate, you cannot afford not to do that. Mm. Because if you want your policies to carry uh, the vote in parliament, they it must be supported by the other people, mm. particularly when you may not have a majority in parliament. So that is the packaging that we want a government of national unity who should begin to heal the divides mm. and ensure that uh, this winner-takes-all philosophy is put to, the, uh, to rest once and for all. We are all winners. Secondly, uh, we want to begin to put in place policies mm. that begin a different economic path. It is very easy to take an economic path in which a few benefit at the expense of the many. That is the natural flow right. of a capitalist society. <laughs> Are you with me? Mm -hmm. Where a few benefit at the expense of the many. Mm -hmm. It is much more difficult to change that path in such a way that you grow it in the middle by pulling the people from the bottom up so that the majority of the population have a decent standard of living. Mm -hmm. Now, you can go around the world and look at places. Take America, which you all like to, you know, as if it is the jewel and diamond in the sky. Go to certain places in America and see right. how people live. Indeed. You have been, so you know. Yes. It's the people here who have never seen, they think it's the jewel and the star. And you can see that there's a very big divide and a lot of people have fallen out of the system. Mm -hmm. Why do you think Trump is so popular? because he's beginning to speak for those people who feel, are you with me, mm -hmm. that they have been left mm. uh, behind. Indeed. And that so, is a natural pattern in this capitalist system that we have adopted. You go to the uh, Nordic countries, etc., and they have adopted a deliberately different system. It's not that it is not oriented to the use of capital, but it has a strong collective bent. It has a strong bent of the collective good, so that we are not concentrated on creating billionaires, mm -hmm. but we are strong in creating a common, decent standard of living Real. for the average person. So this is what the direction we need to be on. So, so w w what I hear you say is, um, you know, it, it, instead of taking a wholesale capitalism, we should figure out what works for us. Well, I'm saying that don't take a wholesale market-driven, aggressive approach to the exclusion of ensuring that you generate within your community mm -hmm. growth that helps your own indigenous people okay. and wealth that will accrue to them. If you use systems that only create wealth, as for economic growth, it can be there. Right. But it can grow and be exported. But if you take a different approach, it will grow and some of it will remain right, here. Right, so, so uh, uh, that's what I'm trying to understand. Yeah. Um, what is the alternative you're proposing to what we experience now in the country? Fantastic. So what we are saying in the economic sphere is that the first thing we have to do is address the issue of our approach to the economy. Mm. We have to invest in our areas of production agriculture, manufacturing, mm -hmm. and increase money generation, wealth creation, and only address the issue of social services and what have you 
commensurate with what we have generated. What does that we mean? We cannot go and borrow money to address those issues for the purpose of winning an election. And then as a result of having to pay that money back, we adopt policies that emasculate and kill the production areas, which is what is going on now. Mm -hmm. So that is not me saying it. An economy will never, <laughs> are you with me, work to create wealth and to be shared for all of us if it is based on borrowing money mm. to uh, appease people in elections and provide election freebies at the expense of investing in the growth areas of the economy. Mm. Because then you create the conditions that bring about high interest rates, you create the conditions that bring about high transaction costs, and all these are the reasons why the private sector is having problems in growing at the rate at which we want it to grow. So we are saying that we're taking a fundamentally different approach. Right. The Great Transformation Plan is going to focus on those policies that will help us grow this area. We will explain to Ghanaian people why we cannot do X, Y, Z social interventions at this time, but given that we are generating here, at the appropriate time, we'll be able to do it. Mm. Now, that is different to, from the outset, saying no, uh, this is what they want, let's give it to them. As a head of uh, uh, your family, you don't go around so, giving your children everything they want. You have to give them the things they need, anticipating that as they grow, they will need different things along the course. The, and I think that the partisan democracy has affected decision-making of the political duo mm. to not focus the, the, on the this idea, area. The yeah. idea of uh, moving the country from consumer nation to mm. a production nation mm. or a manufacturing nation mm. um, isn't exactly novel. Um, government after government, yeah. hang on, yes. have made that promise. Yes. The last one being the current administration. Mm -hmm. The plan was to use the one district, one factory mm -hmm. to move us from uh, you know, cons consumption to production. Mm -hmm. It was uh, to be spearheaded mm -hmm. by uh, your alliance member, mm -hmm. uh, Alan Kojo, Chairman Ting. Mm -hmm. As we know, um, we haven't seen a, a successful story yet. Mm -hmm. How do you convince us that this alliance will be able to move this country uh, from consumption yeah. to production? So, you see... Yeah, it's good that you brought this up. Putting in place factories, etc., is good. The investment is good. But what is even better is managing the financial side of the country so that the cost of capital to those mm. industries are not murderous. What is important is managing the fiscal side of it so that taxation on those countries do not kill the goose that lays the golden egg. Mm. What is also important is controlling the size of government and the expenditure of government so that it is not a burden on this growth of these people. So it is not about the idea of growing the production area. Everybody says that. The question is, what are you prepared to do to make sure it grows? We know that a farm needs to be weeded. But if you don't remove your shirt and bend down and weed it, mm -hmm. the plants you've planted will suffer. So it's not a matter of just going and planting the plants and say, I've planted a farm. Are you with me? You have to work on the conditions that allow it to grow. Mm -hmm. And what we're pointing out to you is that, hey, our farm is over infested with weeds. What we will harvest will not be enough for the whole family. If we are planting again, let's take the weeding seriously. Let's give those plants a chance to grow. Mm. Let's give our industries a chance so, Doug, to grow. So, I, I, I want to break down what you have said. Yes. Because you've used a lot of euphemisms, yes. right? Yes, yes. What you're saying is that one district, one factory would have worked if we didn't have killer taxes. It would have worked better. Better. Yes. If we didn't have... Yes. But is it even working? Because uh, how many, uh, how many fa factories can we count on our fingertips no, in it, each district? It's, it's, it's not even the number of factories that you can count. Even factories that were there before, even people we who owned poultry, no, poultry farms that were there before, are collapsing because of these conditions. Why? Somebody who used to bring in poultry feed 
to maintain his uh, poultry farm. Mm -hmm. He looks at the taxes now. He looks at the cost of energy, electricity. He is, can only produce so many chickens and so many eggs in a given time. There's no magic to, to make that leap out into the sky. So if these things narrow and narrow his base, and even the workers that he has there are asking for more and more money because the cost of living is going higher and higher, mm. it gets to a stage where it collapses. So what I'm telling you is that the conditions, are you with me, I'm listening. are as important as instituting new factories. And if you give me the job of institute new factories, but you don't create the conditions for them to grow, who is to blame for that? You tell me. <laughs> but as an alliance, do you not worry that the association, the past association of uh, the leader of movement of, for change could come to bite you in the elections? Why should it? Well, he's been part of an administration that has been berated for how they have, uh, you know, run the country down to where it is right yeah, now. Yeah. And if he played a critical role mm. as trace and industry mm. minister, mm. Uh, well, then he was a part of the failure. Well, you see, uh, this is part of the symptom of the extreme partisanship of elections. In proper democracies, people can serve in this government and turn around and serve in that government. Why? Because they're the best person to do it. Mm -hmm. People can serve in this government, turn around and criticize it, and even resign from it, and come back and lead it, because the objective is what is important. But in a place where we have almost replaced our tribal affiliations with parties, it is sacrilege. <laughs> Are you but, but it's the track record that <laughs> yes. no, is going to I'm, talk. I'm, I'm whether coming, or not, yes. whether or not the system allows yes. for free movement yes. of political figures from one place True. to the other. And I'm coming to that. So for me, the fact that he has come out of there speaks to two things. Mm. And of course, I'm not speaking for him. I'm speaking from my observation. What made him come out? Are you with me? It could be. And don't forget, he's a founding member. Yeah, we know what made him so, come out. So, uh, yes, but you see, you, you see the end result mm -hmm. of what made him come out. But you don't see what has gone on in there. If we are, say, we're a party that believes in development and freedom, and we cannot have our own party elections in freedom, mm -hmm. when are, how are we going to run a government of development and freedom? Now, if I object to that, are you with me? And as you saw, even some of the other candidates objected to that, uh, and some changes were made, not enough to change the situation, but uh, belated. Mm. Then it tells you that this person has something he wanted to achieve in there, and he could not achieve it based on the trends that he had seen within the party, and therefore felt he had to come out to be able to achieve that. So I think that is important. And maybe coming out to do that is coming out to do it for the nation. Mm -hmm. Because the same things that we see in abuse of power, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, you, 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 you not only abuse the national system, but you also abuse partisan power. Are you with me? Yes. And then you have elections, and then we, whether he's won or not, we're declaring. <laughs> are you with me? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of things tell you that there's a gradual shift away from the desire to obey rules that make it a fair playing ground mm. for everybody. So you don't and think it's something, you know, the alliance would have to contend with in the no, elections? I think that, uh, if anything at all, that should give you the credence that this person is wanting to correct something that is no, happening. I'm, I'm, I'm not asking in third party perspective. Yeah. I'm asking in, in your view yeah. as founder of the National oh, no, no. Interest Movement no. who's gone into alliance yeah. with Movement yeah. for Change. I don't think Was I that a consideration you made? I, I saw a, 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 a number of issues and on balance, I think that he's a credible candidate that brings a lot to the table. Mm. His experience there itself is going to make him somebody who wants to make sure the system works fairly for everybody. Okay. Because if it has not worked for me, to the extent where I have to leave something I helped to build, I would want to make sure in my government that this works for everybody. 
And that is what we have always preached, mind you, in the national interest movement, that there must be equity and there must be meritocracy mm. if we are to have a system that is fundamentally different to what we have now. So I see that as a positive. On top of that, he's not just anybody. Mm. Uh, this is somebody who has been at the forefront of the helm of affairs. He's somebody who has his own large personal political following within the party. Uh, he's somebody who is known to other Ghanaians. Mm. And by the way, he's somebody who a lot of people outside the party have always admired mm. and thought this man is too good to be over there. He should be with us. Mm. <laughs> Are you with me? Because he is not that kind of raw, conservative, ultra-right figure. If anything at all, he's seen more as a progressive. Mm. So it was natural that it will be an alliance of progressives. Yes. A, a, a bit more on the chances of the ARC, mm. um, you know, in the future elections, i.e. the 2024 elections. But right now I want us to uh, talk about that uh, great plan that mm. you have mm. to take uh, the country from the doldrums of poverty. Mm. Now, um, you have outlined beautifully what the objective is, what you plan to mm. do. My question is, what does the uh, NIM bring to the table of the alliance? Well, I think first of all, the NIM has been very, NIM has been very instrumental in shaping the framework for the alliance. Mm -hmm. It has been very instrumental in ordering the priority of interventions that we should make in order to get the maximum returns to investment. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have always believed that our problem emanates from the side of governance. If we can improve governance, then the investments in industry, infrastructure, etc., will work better to our favor. If we don't improve governance, then it is tantamount to collecting water with a bucket, in a bucket with a hole in it. So first fix the hole so that you get more water for your effort. And that is basically what we, we have done in formulating the framework for this alliance. In addition to that, from a technical perspective, we participated in shaping the uh, models for development, etc. cetera. There right. are key models in there. We'll talk about that soon. Uh, but also, uh, if you look at the way in which uh, the Great Transformation Plan has concrete things in it that address the reality of where we are. Uh, that was also something very important to us and important to them too. Mm. Uh, in this country, I've never seen anybody who's come and said, look, this is what I want to achieve. These are the steps I'll take to achieve it. Uh, this is the comprehensive holistic uh, program and I will do it in these steps. And it will mean that it is going to cost us this much. We want people to offer people that kind of statement so that people know at the end of the day. Now, the reason why people don't talk about those things is one, because either they don't know where they're going to get the money from, <laughs> are you with me? Mm -hmm. Or they know that the way they're going to get the money is going to make matters worse mm -hmm. than before. But for the moment, let's tell them what we are going to give them. In an alliance, it's not only about the expertise that are coming together. It's mm. also about the numbers, mm. isn't it? Mm. And then it's also about the money. <coughs> right, so let's first start with the numbers. Mm. Uh, what are the numbers that you're contributing to this alliance? Uh, generally, what are the numbers the, you know, the alliance is expecting in totality? Mm. And then also, how much money are you bringing aboard to this? Well, I, I'm glad you're asking those questions. Uh, because different people bring different things uh, mm. to the table. Uh, we have quite a number of people, and I'm sure you've seen them before in the, around the uh, name table. You see more of them during our launch, who are people of substance. Uh, people, when people see them, they know that, look, in their respective fields, these people, you know, are doing. Not that they have done, they are doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are you and mm -hmm. me? and can do. So I think that is important. The next part of it is that uh, we have made the conversation about a system change relevant in an election. Before, 
that seemed to have been on the back burner. Now, we've brought that out to the fore for people to ask, yes, you've promised me this, but how are you, am I going to get it? Because you've promised me those things before. And if the system doesn't change, you will never be able to deliver those things. So now people have to speak comprehensively to how they will progressively change the system mm. to work more for everybody instead of for a few people Indeed. and describe it. The numbers are important in the sense that uh, your message will bring numbers. Uh, already, we have been working for a, a while. Mm. Uh, we don't have the numbers that uh, Movement for Change has because they have invested a lot mm. in frontline polling station volunteers. Mm. Uh, we don't have that kind of money, uh, but we certainly have the commitment and also we have had the experience in campaigns mm. that when we join them at the, at, at the grounds, we will enhance uh, the quality and effectiveness of their, uh, of their output to deliver uh, votes. Uh, in addition to that, other people mm. have now seen the alliance and they also want to come in and they have come in. Mm. So that is also going to increase our numbers. But it's not just a question of the numbers alone. Mm -hmm psychologically, Indeed. are you and me, Indeed. when people see that for once people have gravitated into this alliance and they are about something that is going to respond to the reality of the situation, not pro promises, then they will begin to sit up and say, oh, maybe let's give them a chance. Very in well. any event, if you're locked in a house and you've tried every door and you still can't get out, can't you climb out the window? <laughs> we'll talk a bit more about the numbers. Yes. When we return, don't go. Yes. Away. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My guest tonight is uh, founder for National Interest Movement, also primary member for Alliance for Revolutionary Change, Dr. Uh, Michael Abusakara Foster. Again, thank you so much. You're welcome, Kemeni. So we've been looking at the numbers. Yes. And uh, the, re the, you know, the latest polls will say that uh, at, as of now, mm. movement for change, mm. which is now morphed into mm. the alliance, mm. uh, doesn't have the numbers mm. at all. It would seem that you are highly threatened, mm -hmm. not only by the NDC and the NPP, but also by the newest entrant into the race. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, first of all, uh, this poll, if you have it today, must be from at least two weeks to a month ago. So it is not talking about what was happening mm -hmm. after the alliance has been announced. Right. So you would have to wait for a month or so and then do another poll to see what is the reaction of Ghanaians to the alliance. So I think that is the first start. But this poll also tells us something. It tells us that our flag bearer on his own, Alan Sherman thing, has 7% of the vote at the very minimum. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Now, if in coming out and standing on your own, you have 7% of the vote, over the last God knows how many elections. Who has ever got 7% of the vote? All the political parties combined could not even get 1%. So that tells you that something fundamentally different is about to happen in this election. And that there's a drift out of the traditional parties, mm -hmm. more out of NPP than NDC, into the non-aligned domain. And you can see the numbers as they stand now. <clears throat> what it tells you is that as the election goes on, if this drift continues to happen, then the groups that are not in NDC or MPP will then be the ones that grow the most. And you don't need to be a wizard to figure that out. If you look at the non-committed group, they are about 45%. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not committed at this stage of the game, it means that I really don't want to commit myself to the ones that I can see. I'm waiting for somebody to commit myself to. So again, you expect them to get a bigger share of that 45%, particularly if they can project themselves well 
and give the real feeling that we are here to win. You yourself have not been seen it. Did you go on a hiatus? Uh, no, 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 no. Where I, have you I, been? I mean, uh, first of all, uh, you know that I've never been part of any government here. So how do I live? I survive by my profession, ah. <laughs> you and me. Mm. And as a matter of fact, for 27 years, mm. I worked outside this country. I only came back to this country about 15 years ago. Uh, and I still maintain my network of people, and uh, so I have to look after myself. Uh, and that revolves a lot of time, etc. I've also been trying to do some investments here, or make some investments mm. here. Uh, so I work on those uh, as well. Uh, but the important thing is that, you know, uh, we have not abandoned the fray. Uh, we have been constantly talking about the mm. need for an alternative. Indeed. Founded on some a very fundamental shift from where we are now. You have a really strong background in plant and agric science. Yes. Um, I want you to assess briefly mm. Mm. the state of agriculture and food security in this country uh, as of now? Well, you see, right now, our biggest challenge is the cost of food. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to use economic terms like food price inflation and people wonder, what is that? It's the cost of food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are is. you with me? Relative to your income. And not only food, all other things have gone high relative to people's income. So much that food, which is a basic for all of us, as a matter of fact, people with lower income spend upwards of 60%, 70% of their income on food alone. So when you increase food by even 10, 15%, it is a big impact on them as to what is left over for other things. Now. This has happened not just overnight. It has been consistent, it has been persuasive, it has been persistent. We get fluctuations when harvests come in and out, but it still keeps rising. Mm -hmm. Right now, Ghana is ranked as one of the most expensive places to live in Africa. So those are not statistics that I have just sat here mm -hmm. and made up because a doctor is against the government. No, let's forget about all those things. We are all Ghanaians, let's face the reality. This is the soup we're cooking, it's not tasting nice. You know, make some adjustments, <laughs> are you with me? Mm -hmm. Now, where agriculture is concerned, we have kept treating it as if it is just production. Uh, as if the problem is solved by having a new donor project. Oh yeah, we've now got this donor project. We've now got this donor project. And then oh, now we're focusing on this, we're focusing on that. But that comprehensive plan to say that this is our population, this is our people, this is where we get our main calories mm. from. And we're going to increase this amount of calories by this amount. Now, the science of it is not magic. We know it. It is the cost of it. And the policies we need to make to make sure that it works on the ground. Mm. Now, sometimes we will pay for the cost, do some small subsidy, etc. But we are not prepared to make the policy adjustments to make sure that it works. Because if you've given well, me... Well, what would the um, policy adjustment yes, you... If you? I just want to use a clear example uh -huh. for people to follow. Uh -huh. If you've given me some few bags of fertilizer and some seed, you know, to produce, you know, a, a crop, uh, and then the cost of transportation is very high. It feeds into the price. By the time it gets to the market here, there is a certain price it cannot come below. Meanwhile, uh, other produce are on the market from outside, which have received support from their right. governments. And now I'm competing, I can't compete in my own market. Now, that means that the investments you made in production have been rendered useless. So it is important that you make the cons commensurate uh, measures mm. in your policy regarding your market to make sure that we are competitive in that market. There's no science to it. Everybody who has been successful has done that. Right now, as we sit here, farmers are roaming in Italy, Europe, everywhere, with tractors, pouring food on the ground, mm. not because there's not food. 
the standard of living. Indeed. Are you with me? The, the, the market has affected their standard of living. That's why they're doing Doctor, that. <laughs> what do you think the legacy of the Akufuadu administration is going into the end of, the, of his tenure? Well, look, uh, I basically am not someone who lambasts people just for the sake of it. Uh, I think they have done some things which are good. I like the free... Uh, SHS, even though the implementation of it had challenges. The concept of it was, was good. After all, it comes from my uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, free HS was nothing new. It's something that Nkrumah did. If he didn't do it, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Uh, many of the political leaders wouldn't be sitting here today if he hadn't done it. He even did it up to university level. And you even got car when you came out of university. Mm, that's <laughs> oh, <nice>. yes. <laughs> and Bangalore. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, yes. I see. <laughs> you know, but times have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, yes, we still need to do it to keep up. But we need to do it in such a way that those who need it the most get it. Uh, you see, there's been a furor about these. I don't, I don't think they're laptop. They're called what? Tablets. Tablets. Now, there's nothing wrong with introducing those tablets. There's nothing wrong with trying to digitize. But when you look across the spectrum and we talk about equity, why should those who have already be given more when the people who have nothing are not being given anything? And if you are going to give somebody who is sitting in a classroom under trees a, 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 tablet. a tablet, what is he going to do with it? Where is he going to charge it? Are you with me? Mm -hmm. So the equity in the system is what we're talking about. And we must not always be responding uh, to situations that are driven by mm -hmm. partisanship, are driven by this democratic dispensation. And when I say that, I'm not talking with respect to this current government mm -hmm. only. We have always maintained that the partisanship and the winner-takes-all mentality has made the stakes so high that our common sense mm. is not being applied to our development. It's rather being subsumed and hijacked by the desire to win the Indeed. favor of the population. So what all I can say at the moment is that the economic conditions speak for themselves. Mm. Uh, Ghanaians had very high hopes but I think we can all say with a degree of the honesty that this is not where we expected to be. This is not our sitting place. Indeed. We can be higher. We look forward to going higher. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you too for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of Hot Issues. Uh, my guest has been Dr. Abu Sakara Foster. He is founder of National Interest Movement. He's also primary uh, partner in the Alliance for Revolutionary Change. We've had a great discussion around the, the Alliance. We hope that you enjoyed this episode. We'll see you here same time next week. Bye-bye.